All right, friends, if you haven't answered the poll yet, you've got like three seconds left before I go ahead and close that down and take a look. I'll share the results with you so you all can see. Over half of you are admitted students, both freshmen and transfers. So first and foremost, congratulations. Welcome to the Gaucho family. I know this is a really exciting time of the year where ultimately you're deciding where to attend. Uh, we also have some future applicants as well as some family members. And then as far as location, we've got a little bit of everywhere, almost half of you from SoCal, but lots of uh, folks visiting from outside of California entirely. So whoever you are, wherever you are joining from, we are excited that you are here. My name is Jane Remel, and I work in the Office of Admissions at UC Santa Barbara. I actually am an alumna of UCSB. I graduated back in 2014 with a degree in chemistry, so I'm really excited to be moderating this panel in particular. Um, we have got a phenomenal panel lined up for you, and I'm going to go ahead and hand it on over to them so that they can introduce themselves. Hello everyone, my name is Abby Cervantes. I'm a third year biopsychology major. I'm from Los Angeles, California, specifically Compton area. Um, and I hope to become a nurse at some point, but I am pre-health, so I'm um, very interested in a lot of different things and just really interested in the healthcare field in general. And I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Chloe. I'm a CCS biochemistry major with a minor in feminist studies. I'm from Carson and my academic interests include biotechnology and endocrine biochemistry, but I'm really excited to talk to you guys. And if you have any questions about anything, I'm here and don't hesitate to ask. Hello, everybody. My name is Krithika. I am a second year computer engineering major and an architecture and urban history minor. Uh, I'm from Foster City in the Bay Area, if any of you are familiar. Uh, some of my interests are nanotechnology and signaling, specifically medical device technology. So if you want to have a conversation about that, let me know. And in true STEM student style, I'm going to be rushing to a midterm about halfway through. So if you have questions, ask them early. That's my point. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Sam Hall. I'm a second year, I'm a chemistry major. I'm from Thousand Oaks, California, which is like really not that far away from UC Santa Barbara. And my academic, my academic interest and my aspirations is to work in the cosmetic uh, chemistry field. I'm hoping to focus in um, texturized hair, but anywhere in the field of beauty is something I wanna explore. I'm excited to see everyone, not see everyone, but be present with everyone today. Thank you all. Now, this panel is really entirely centered around the questions that you all ask. So you'll find within Zoom, there's a Q&A feature, and you can use that to send your questions, and we will do our best to get through as many as we can in the next 45 minutes. Now, that being said, some of you actually sent in some questions with your registration, so I've got some of those that we'll pull from. But again, I encourage you to ask your questions live so that we can really address the things that you're concerned about during the live session. Now, to get us started, I'd love to hear from you all just briefly why you decided to pursue the major that you're currently in. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll start with Abby. Yeah, so I originally came in as a biology major. I actually had no idea what a biopsychology major was or like that it even existed at all. Um, and for those of you that don't know what it is, it's basically exactly what the name is. It's a mixture of biology and psychology. Um, you have the same prereqs as biology majors and have to finish a lot of the same classes that they do, but it's really in your upper dose that it changes. And that's one of the reasons why I chose um, to do this, so to do this major. When I was my, in my second year and I started taking gen bio classes, as I'm sure all of us are in or have had to do, I realized that I did not want to do that for another two years. I was pretty much over it by the time that I learned it my second time. I was like, you know what? I love this. I love biology. I love learning about it, but I don't want to learn it again and again and again. Um, so I kind of took a quarter and I did more psychology classes because that was something that I was also interested in. Um, 
And I realized that I love psychology and I love the brain specifically, which is what biopsychology mainly focuses on. So it's a lot of like neuroscience um, and learning how the brain works and like why that affects behavior. Um, and that was like the perfect mixture for me. So I just switched to biopsychology um, my second year and I've been loving it ever since. It's I think it's the perfect mixture of biology and psychology for me. And um, yeah, that was my main reason why I chose to do biopsychology instead of sticking with the original biology that I came in as. And anyone can go next. I'll let you all take it all from here. I could just jump in real quick. Um, so initially from high school, I was just, I liked science. I liked math. Did I really know where I wanted to go into when I went to college? Not really. Um, I actually was interested in the med field. I was aspiring to be a pharmacist and I was actually looking to the pharmaceutical sciences major here at UCSB. Um, however, I was like, uh, I'm more chemistry leaning than I am bio leaning. So I was like exploring the chemistry major here. And I something I really enjoyed um, in terms of UCSB is that you can do chemistry, but you can do chemistry um, that's under the bio department, or you could do chemistry in terms of under the chemistry department here at ECSB. So I thought that versatility was really nice. Um, the difference of it being is that if you're under the bio department, you're you're most likely gonna have a heavier focus with bio um, and a little bit more flexibility towards that uh, realm of biology. And then um, if you're under the chemistry department, um, you're more under the field of all things chemistry and working with more faculty in that space. So that was something I was really interested in. I was like, okay, I can, um, I can jump in that way. I actually thought I would want to do a biochemistry major initially when I started. Kind of has evolved. I'm like, mm, let me just take out bio from the equation and just make it chemistry. Um, and I've been absolutely loving it since ever since. Um, it's difficult. It's challenging. Definitely um, pushing me. But I'm very glad that I'm here. And that's just kind of the rundown of me choosing my major. Um, so the reason why I chose to be a biochemistry major, very similar to Abby and Samal, but um, what I want to say is that going to high, I guess in high school, I knew I wanted to go into STEM and I loved chemistry, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. And as we know, chemistry is such a broad field. You can go into materials, you can go into organic chemistry, biochemistry. And the reason why I found myself uh, becoming a biochemistry major is that, um, I was able to get these internships and research opportunities through UCSB. And because of that, they really opened up my eyes to other fields such as like psychology, um, materials. And from there, I realized that all of the interests that I found within research at UCSB has been really coupled to being a biochemistry major. And um, overall, I just saw that with biochemistry, I thought it would be more applicable for my career choice and being uh, biotechnologist. So that's kind of just how I decided to become a biochemistry major. I actually started off um, interested in biotech when I was in high school. So my school had like this co really comprehensive program. I went through it, realized by the end that lab work was just not my forte. Um, so decided, okay, how can I, how can I work with this? And um, there was a medical incident that happened when I was a sophomore, that kind of prompted me to kind of look into medical device technology. And I did a little bit of research with that. I started looking at the materials, at the signaling portions, all of that, the nanotech. The nanotech was what really stood out to me. So computer engineering seems like a little bit of a leap sometimes for people, but it gave me that good balance between, okay, um, this is how I'm going to approach building, you know, these teeny tiny little bots that are going to be everywhere. Uh, and how do you control them and how do you interact with them? Uh, and it also gave me a little bit of leeway in terms of giving me other options in my career because realistically, you know, I, I love what I do and I love everything that I've explored since high school, but I'm still not completely sure where I'll end up because, you know, life is, life is malleable and everything is changing. So that's kind of where I stand. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, uh, computer engineering is kind of a, you do both, at least at UCSB, we do both computer science and electrical engineering classes. So you get really the best of both worlds. Awesome, thank you all so much. Um, now, a common theme that came up in the pre-submitted questions was the transition from high school science and math courses to college level courses. So could you maybe share your experience with that transition? And if there's anything you did in high school maybe to help you with that transition? Um, in this case, let's start with Chloe. 
I would say that going into college, it was a very difficult transition, just to be honest with myself. Um, it was difficult because um, I'm not sure if this is just uh, an experience I had, but uh, I realized like in high school, a lot of the assignments we had or the exams, it wasn't very um, conceptual. It was more of, can you do these questions? And um, it was more like busy work. But then as you go into college, you can see that everything that you're doing will really help you in the long run because everything builds up on each other. So um, as you guys go into the quarter system, you're going to see that a lot of your courses would be labeled like A, B, C, and all those courses are going to rely on the information you learned in the past one. So I would say that the transition was hard because um, you have to constantly remember things from the past. But I would say things that helped me a lot in high school is that um, I was able to take the AP courses that was provided and um, if I had the chance to go back into high school, I would also recommend taking more community college classes too. I can kind of go off of um, Chloe. Like she said, I, I also struggled a lot um, my first year. I was not, I realized I wasn't really ready for college um, when I came into it. So I, I'm a first gen student, so I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Um, I think when I came into the quarter system and like, I didn't really prep myself very well for it. So it was a big um, change for me and it was a huge learning curve for me. So I, really struggled my first two quarters to really just understand like how to study in the quarter system. Um, the first year I think is when I learned how to study for college. So even if you studied in high school, which I'm sure a lot of us did, did and do because um, you're STEM oriented. So you're taking a lot of harder classes. Like for example, in high school, I took a lot of AP classes that were STEM related. And I thought that those were gonna prepare me for college because everybody says, take those to prepare you for college, but nothing prepares you for the quarter system like the quarter system. So I learned how to study a lot my first two years, um, like what it meant to actually study and not just like stare at a piece of paper for two hours. Um, so that was like a huge learning curve for me, just learning how to do that. I think something that helped me a lot was finding a group of girls and like a group in general that was kind of studying and doing the same classes that I was or like finding people in my classes to study with. Um, because it just helps you to stay motivated and stay focused on what you're doing and not just kind of like get lost in like studying and like not really doing anything effective or like proactive. So finding a group of people really helps. Um, somebody asked like what what you do, what I did in high school to prepare for pre-health. Um, honestly, like AP classes. I also just like did specific things like volunteered at different places um, in order to kind of like prepare myself to see if I even liked the healthcare field. So I volunteered at the Orthopedic Institute for Children in, in Los Angeles. I volunteered at different places. Um, I would say don't stress too much about it. Like do volunteering, do volunteering through your high school. If opportunities arise that you can do, um, for a career that you're interested in, then do them. But I think something that I stressed myself a lot in was that I was really stressed about getting these volunteering and like these internships, but I didn't have any way of getting there or like a car or <laughs> different things like that. So I was always really stressed about that, but know like that you can do what's in your limits and you'll still be able to like get into college and pursue a career that you wanna pursue, you know? Um. I, I'm just everything that everyone said I agree because like the, the transition is very difficult um, I think it just in terms now you're not only uh, transitioning academically you're tra transitioning in like all spheres of your life academically socially and so that could be difficult um, and so I know everyone's been kind of like prefacing the quarter system and so the quarter system is basically um, a 10-week structure plus your um, final week which is 11th week and there's four quarters so your fall winter, spring, and it's not optional. And so um, it's different from a semester system, which is typically 15 weeks. And so it's a little bit faster paced. And so you have midterms almost like your third weekend and that can be really intimidating and kind of a struggle. Um, and so like Chloe said, the, a lot of the tests and classes are more conceptual. And so you actually have to apply the knowledge that you use compared to high school. It's more like just answer the question. Um, and so like to be completely transparent um, to just voice, some of, I've been seeing some of the questions of like, unsure, like being a little bit weary about the path is that 
um, even in my years, even this, this past year, um, I failed a couple of my chemistry classes or one chemistry class. And so um, that can be really daunting as a first gen student as well. And as a person of color, like there's just so many things going on. And with this pandemic, it can be really hard on yourself to be like, how can I move forward in this career in STEM as a woman um, and as a black woman specifically. And so having the resources on this campus, like counselors, the clubs and organizations, CLAS, which is a, a free tu group tutoring uh, program that UCSB offers, which is absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend. Um, there's just so many things on campus to continually boost yourself and further yourself, regardless of any um, struggles or downfalls that you might have in the process. Um, and just to rely on your intelligence and to be like, I got this, like, it's just one bump in the road. It's not going to depict my whole journey. If you're really passionate about something and you have a vision, that's what kind of drove me to continue going in the path I'm going in as a woman in STEM. Um, that's kind of how the transition went. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole, the whole thing about, um, you know, going into these more advanced classes. So for me, I came into a little more of an advanced computer science class than what was normal for um, our, we have a four year grid system. So what was important for me there was finding groups of, it didn't have to be women in STEM, but women in STEM definitely helps, right? Uh, that for me has been the biggest, uh, the biggest fallback for the entirety of the pandemic. Um, learning in the pandemic is no fun. There's no lying about that. But having that group of girls to just, even if it's just us at midnight, really annoyed because, you know, we can't get whatever, to, whatever lab or anything to work. We're all doing it together. We're all going through it together. So having groups is really important. And, you know, people have been talking about the, the living learning community for women in STEM. Personally, I never lived there, but I did consider applying for it. And I know everyone who did live there really enjoyed it and it just creates this great community. So organizations and living situations or anything where you can just get um, get in contact with people who are in the same situation as you is always gonna be helpful and always gonna be beneficial. And I think UCSB does a great job of that. We always emphasize community. And so there's your big example, right? Thanks y'all. Did any of you by chance live in the women in STEM living learning community? Darn. Okay, I'll share some information in the chat. So for those of you who are interested, you can learn a little bit more. But yes, that is a really good opportunity to kind of find that community right away as soon as you get here on campus. Um, now another thing uh, or theme that's coming up in the questions is opportunities for hands-on experience, whether that's labs or research. Um, could you maybe share some experiences you've had with either your labs or research opportunities and, and how you found those opportunities? Um, maybe we will start with Krithika because I know you have to leave in just a few minutes. Um, so, okay, here's the thing. I, like I said, I'm a computer engineering major. Research and all of that looks a little bit different for us, but certainly by no means does it mean it's not an opportunity. I chose to go the internship route. So um, besides, so we have labs that are our classes, right? So I'm taking a circuits class right now that has a lab accompanying with it. I've been taking that for almost the entirety of this year. So that gives you a good idea of the classes, right? And that continues throughout. You take labs in chemistry and physics and all of those classes because they're all are relevant, right? Uh, in terms of outside of classes, uh, there are tons of internship opportunities. We always reference FRAP as our as our resource, right? But it's uh, any any lab, any professor is more than happy to talk to you about what they're doing. I know pretty much every single physics professor I've had, every single engineering professor I've had has always prefaced their first lecture with what they're doing, uh, like what their research is. So if you ever want to go talk to them during office hours, I think they'll literally just tell you like, hey, come talk to me. i just sit here anyway, so come talk to me. So um, definitely there's a lot of opportunities for that. And then uh, in terms of internships, there are tons of opportunities. I recently just um, got one with a, with a defense company in the area. So there are definitely tons of opportunities and I don't, I don't wanna cut anyone off. So I'm gonna stop here, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I can go in and um, so personally looking up to looking into research as a currently is something that I'm actually exploring. I've been kind of doing my research, trying to figure out people I want to talk to professors in the chemistry department. And so some of the one of the biggest things as to why I chose UCSB, UCSB compared to the other college I was uh, kind of debating on was the research opportunities here and uh, the area that we live in Santa Barbara. So due to having a middle sized campus with uh, only 3000 uh, graduate students, 
that provides almost all the research for all the undergrad, all the other, for the undergraduates, my bad. And so um, that provides obviously so many opportunities for us to just grab for ourselves. We're really not competing with someone that had like, you know, a master's or PhD level uh, education. Um, and so like Kritika said, the professors here and the faculty are really wanting to accommodate to undergraduates and to let students explore um, and kind of dive into any type of field that you want. Um, even if there's any you no know, research that pertains to you of your interest, you can also uh, seek your own um, research of your liking. We have an ERCA, um, ERCA grant that you can uh, apply to. And so there's just a lot of possibilities. Also in Santa Barbara, we're like the biggest university in like the general area. Like we have Cal Poly Slow, which is like an hour and a half away. And then the next is the LA uh, metropolitan area. So like everything in this area when it comes to companies are up for grabs. And so um, that's kind of like what kind of drove me to UCSB. And I'm hopefully been talking to some companies, kind of emailing, have some interviews, let's see. But um, <laughs> hopefully this summer, or if not, I'm also looking to research with some faculty on campus. So it's just like all up to grabs and it's totally doable, totally doable. Um, for research opportunities, I would say that you can absolutely just email professors. Um, for me, uh, I actually work as a research assistant in the biochemistry department uh, for the chemistry portion of biochemistry majors. And um, I would say my biggest advice if you want to get involved in research is first, you know, read into their research, ask uh, questions, go to their office hours. But, you know, if we're uh, talking about it in terms of like COVID situation, I would say just email them, tell them what, why you're interested, as well as what skills you can bring to the table. Like for instance, since we're in COVID, a lot of people are more interested in bioinformatic research assistance. Um, I would also say that there's a ton of research opportunities here at UCSB. And um, I guess with my experience going into research is that don't feel, um, I guess defeated when professors don't email you back because you know they're teaching hundreds of students they won't be able to answer every email and i to be honest i believe i emailed about like 20 professors before getting into a research position but um i don't want to talk too much about it but um i would happily answer more questions if there are any Yeah, I, to be completely honest, I have not done research on campus. Um, when I started looking for research opportunities, which was like the end of my second year, um, obviously the pandemic hit, so everything got closed. Nobody was taking on internships or like um, research assistants. So I was kind of just like in a weird place where I was like, okay, I don't know what to do. Um, and I have always like kind of struggled with emailing people and like how Chloe is saying, and like um, a lot of the girls have mentioned like, you should email people and like talk to people and like the opportunities are there for you all the time. I was always really nervous about emailing people until I kind of realized, okay, like what's the worst thing that they could say? No, like, okay. And then I go somewhere else. Like why? Like that just shouldn't hurt my feelings or anything. Um, so I haven't done research yet, but I've been emailing a lot of people trying to get different opportunities. Um, how they're saying the opportunities are there. Um, we're very much an undergraduate university, so you're going to be able to find different um, opportunities because everything is kind of geared towards you and people want research assistants that are undergrads. Um, but for me, the route that I kind of decided to take was I really wanted to be involved in community on campus and I wanted to have um, more of like a leadership experience when I was here on campus because I want to go into pre-health and I know that that is going to have a lot to do with like being a doctor or being a nurse was that leadership aspect of it and like that whole um, well-rounded aspect of it. So I started interning at um, SEAL, which is our student engagement and leadership um, office on campus. So I work a lot with orgs and I do a lot of um, programming and planning, which is something that I was really interested in. I've also developed a lot of really personal skills with them. So um, I've kind of taken like a different route when it comes to science, but still very science related and like still very much in STEM. I just kind of wanted to explore different parts of myself while I was in college as well. And I'm, I know that a lot of girls on this panel as well have like different jobs that aren't directly related to STEM. So I would say like those opportunities on campus, like don't dismiss those opportunities, like find different things that you find really interesting and like pursue them and like figure yourself out. Like not everything you do as a STEM student has to be directly related to STEM. 
That's so true. Oh, sorry. Here, okay. Not as resonating gonna... with what she says. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All I was going to say is Sam Hill and I are both tour guides, and I feel like she was probably going to touch on that too. But um, that job as a tour guide that I got helped me so much in my in my new internship experience because my my manager, the first thing he said was, wow, look at your public speaking skills. Like, it really, like, take every opportunity you get because it just, it helps you so much. On that note, I'm going to jump off. But thank you so much to everybody who came. And uh, yeah, good luck with everything. I'll see you guys later. I just want to quickly jump and say um, that for everyone that's like watching, I know we're talking about research and like how important it is. And I know UCSB is a top tier research university, but again, like don't feel uh, an urgency or a need that you have to do research on campus. Like when you come on, like if research is not something that pertains to you, is not of your interest, like that is perfectly okay. There's again, so many other opportunities and fields that you can explore. So we're just expressing the research, but um, that doesn't mean you have to, you know, you have to do it if you come on campus as a STEM major. Thanks everyone. And that is really good advice. There are so many facets to STEM and so many directions that you can take it. And I think that you know, your time in college is a really good opportunity to explore those different directions and, and figure out how you might want to apply your, your STEM degree. So thank you all. Um, okay, so the next question that came up quite a bit um, in both the pre-submitted as well as the live questions is, you know, very central to this panel in and of itself. And that is, you know, as a woman in STEM, have there been certain challenges that you faced on campus or in the classroom? Could you maybe talk a little bit more about that? And we'll start this time with Sam Hall. So um, obviously it's a it's a journey, like as a woman throughout my whole life, like you know, being in, being heavily in a high school that was STEM orientated. Um, coming into spaces like UCSB wasn't necessarily new. However, I do feel like UCSB provided more spaces for women in STEM and just general STEM students, students of color, um, that made me feel more at home than I did even in high school. So not to say everything's flawless. Um, I do come into my chemistry classes um, as a minority all the time. Um, and so it can be really daunting, um, specifically seeing people who might, you know, I'm a first-gen student, so it's like there's so many different things that is on, piled on top of me that can cause a lot of insecurity. Um, definitely have definitely felt imposter syndrome so many different times um, in so many different spaces, and it's kind of unfortunate because it's kind of inevitable. Like there's certain things that are kind of inevitable, um, but at the same time, there's ways to conquer it as ways to kind of promote self-healing in a way to feel safe and feel proactive in these spaces and take charge. Um, so a big aid for me is being part of organizations on, and clubs on campus. Like that's been like my biggest aid um, in basically all forms of my intersectionality. So I'm part of um, the National Society of Black Engineers. I'm not an engineer, <laughs> but we accept all STEM majors. And so being surrounding in a space um, of STEM students that are also, uh, most of them are also black and identify as black. So it's just like, I'm in a space that's a minority of minority. Um, but we all relate in the same struggle and we all build off each other, which is so encouraging. Um, I also have another space I'm part of is uh, called the Black Women's Health Collaborative. And so um, that one's not pertaining to just STEM, but being surrounded by other women, specifically Black women, that also pertain to people from STEM and all different majors, really aids to my growth and heals me in certain ways. So when I come into spaces where I might not feel represented, or some days, you know, you're just not feeling your best. You know, there's always those days. Um, like, it, it's a good reminder and a constant space to, like, go back to um, and have people around you. So that's kind of, like, the way I've kind of navigated spaces as a woman in STEM on campus. Um, but also just, like, finding faculty. Like, I love finding faculty, like, women faculty bestie. <laughs> I did, to be honest, because I'm like, hey, like, they resonate with me. Like, they will understand the struggle, so. I think everything that Sam Hall just said like is perfectly encompassing of like what it is to be a woman in STEM at UCSB. Um, I thought that that was gonna be the biggest thing that kind of held me back 
being a woman in STEM. But to be honest, the classes that I've had, at least my personal experience with like um, biology and like the biopsych major, like a lot of my classes are mainly women, which was like a big shock to me. I didn't expect that to happen when I came to a university of this size, but they've been mainly women. I think um, one experience that I did have um, that kind of held me back as a woman in STEM was a lot of labs are very late at night most of the time. Um, and there was one night where I was biking home and they, I mean, I feel like as women, we can all kind of relate. Like there was just this moment of fear um, where it's just like, I have to get home as fast as I can. And I think like, just knowing that and like I would always try to plan my schedule to where I didn't have to stay on campus until like 9 p.m. because then it was scary to bike home at night so just little things like that where we're always just going to have like this weird like short end of a stick because we are women um and I did kind of have to change we do kind of have to change like how we go about life on campus just because we are women which is really sad but it is like how it is, I guess. Um, but I think for me, like how um, somehow was saying was like my, there was other things that kind of affected me more. For example, being a first gen student or having to work um, on top of going to school. So like, I don't have the, the privilege of just being able to go to school and mainly focus on that. I've always had to work on top of it. So that always kind of felt like it was putting me at a disadvantage. Um, and one of my teachers actually, which is like not, it's not a great look for the STEM, um, community on campus. One of my teachers once told me in office hours, like, I don't understand how you think you're going to be able to work and do a biology degree. And I said, oh, okay. Um, and I was like, that hit me really hard. I had a lot of imposter syndrome from that. I was like, I don't know how I am. Like, who do I think I am coming into the school trying to do both at the same time and be a woman and be first gen and be Hispanic. And it was just like a huge, like, like I hit a rock after that and I think for me like I found like Sam Hall said I found a community for me like I found um, a pre-health sorority on campus a Rosa Ada which I've been a part of ever since um, and it was just basically like I found a group of women who all wanted the same thing who were all striving for the same thing and we created a space for ourselves that was welcoming and safe and ever since then like I have felt like even if something like that happened again or even if somebody told me that again I had somewhere to go back to and be like this is what somebody told me and they and they would support me and they would tell me like, no, like, look at where you are, look at where I am, look at where alumni are, like, you can do it, like, there is a space for you and even if there isn't, you'll make a space for yourself, you know. So there is things that are going to hold you back, but you have to find your support, you have to find your community and like going out and like being involved on this is really going to shape your experience a lot. I think I broke out a little bit, but <laughs> that was basically it. I would say, like, similar to what everyone else has said, that my experience in STEM as a woman is that I just want to say that within my major and, like, going into your upper division courses, you're going to see, well, I guess in my major, I would say we only see, like, two women, me being one of the few people of color in the major. And then on top of that, you can see that, um, I guess, because of this COVID situation, we're all doing breakout rooms and trying to interact with each other and try to un understand the questions. But I always find myself trying to under like explain myself more than the men in the class have to do. And that's partly because they will think that the ideas that I have aren't what you know, pertain to the question. But um, like I said, this major only has a few women, but because of that, we all like banded together. We're all staying together. We're like, we got this, we're doing great. And it's just like what everyone else has said. You really need to make connections with other people, find your group. And once you have your group, you're able to really delve more into the sciences or whatever course you're taking. And, you know, having that support system with you, you're you're able to get more stuff done as well as understand the material more. Great, thank you all so much. And I really appreciate you kind of sharing those really authentic experiences with the panel. Um, now, Abby and Chloe, have either of you by chance studied abroad? I want to though. 
<laughs> it's a plan. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yes. Um, lots of questions about study abroad in the Q&A. So I wanted to, to throw that out there. Um, our education abroad program actually hosted an info session for us earlier this week as part of our open house. So I will share a link to that in the chat. But you know, for those of you asking whether or not you can study abroad as a STEM major, the answer is yes, you absolutely can. Um, it may require a little bit extra planning because you need to make sure that the courses you're taking are really fitting in line with your, your coursework that you need to finish within, you know, your four or your two years, depending if you come in as a freshman or a transfer. Um, you may also be able to go over the summer and do general education. So there are absolutely ways to make it happen. It is not restricted um, at all for STEM students, but it does take a little bit of extra planning and preparation in advance. But again, I'll share a, a link to that information session in the chat so you all can see it. Um, okay, so we've got just a little over five minutes left. And um, we've got lots of questions about kind of balancing your academics with other aspects of your life as a student, your social life, your extracurriculars, a job. Um, could you all talk a little bit about how you manage to get everything done? And in this case, we'll start with, we'll go back to Abby. Um, I do have to say, like I said before, it wasn't without struggle. First year, I definitely struggled with this idea. Um, just like knowing when I had to do school, when I had to do work, when I had to do um, like my social life. So it, I think like the pandemic has kind of helped in that sense because I have only really had to focus on like, there was no social life for a little bit. It was just like school and work and that's all that I was doing. Um, but sorry, there's like something we're having with my internet. Can you hear me? They're specifically trained for and skilled oh. in comprehensive first contact and continuing care. I'm so sorry. Something, my internet just like went really weird. And then my phone started playing something. <laughs> so sorry about that. But what I was saying was um, basically like I really struggled with this for a long time until like I kind of took it upon myself to be like, okay, like we need to like have a planner. We need to like have use, use Google Calendar. Like I need to like set aside times for specific things. Um, and I think that that's something that I really learned, especially my second year. Uh, Cause second year of a biology major of a biosec major, um, is really STEM heavy. Like a lot of your classes are mainly STEM. Um, they're all really like difficult classes. So I really had to like really hunker down and be like, okay, like I need to do this things at certain times and I have deadlines that I have to meet now. So that was really the year that I kind of learned how to um, like focus on my academics at some times and then my work at some times and then my social life at some times. But it's, there's definitely a learning curve. So just be ready for that. um the way so i'm still figuring out how to balance everything <laughs> specifically in this pandemic it's like we were starting to get things in terms of like in person as a freshman and then we went online and it's like a whole totally different like dynamic and i had to like recalibrate so we're still in a work in progress and we're gonna have to probably recalibrate again when we go back on uh, campus hopefully next year so um but in specifically in terms of me what i've kind of like the things that have kept me stable in terms of post uh pre-pandemic and current pandemic um is scheduling <laughs> so um the number one thing is every quarter before the quarter starts like i dedicate a good day or two to planning my schedule in advance so looking through every single syllabus um and really like actually understanding what it says and creating creating a google calendar i think google calendar is kind of my main source um that's like the most stable that i actually keep up to date with because i just do it in the beginning of the corner because most teachers something different in high school they provide you your midterms your homeworks and like all that stuff in advance which is really nice so i just like put that all on the calendar for me to visually see and so um it's nice to have a weekly planner but if you're not that organized it's cool don't worry um, you can always just like pull up your main calendar and just kind of like work through that. And so that's kind of like the way I've been managing my schoolwork. And so um, with UCSB, I've been seeing some comments um, just because it could be hard being a woman in STEM um, and like how does UCSB contribute to spaces like that? And so UCSB is a super uplifting, supportive, collaborative campus. And so um, we know how to balance like 
have fun, but how to like crank down and get our homework done. And I think that's what's so beautiful about UCSB and the vibe that we provide um, living by the beach and being by the mountains and just being in Santa Barbara. Um, and so that's kind of like the process I've been going through is kind of like kind of going with the flow a little bit, kind of going with my intuition of what my feeling does um, and trying to like, you know, balance it with school because you always have to care for yourself to provoke, to be able to do the work that you do. So it's kind of like how I've been kind of maneuvering it kind of not structured though, <laughs> so. I may have realized this a little bit too late, but every year you have to change your scheduling and like your study habits on how to like manage like your academics, extracurriculars or your like social life, depending on the classes you have. Um, but this may sound excessive, but I would say having a Google calendar and making sure that every class is there, as well as the meetings that you would have with like your friends to go over um, exams or anything that's coming up, uh, that's really important so that you don't have to like chase after each other like if you were in person. Um, I would say that, yeah, to be honest, every year I have to change my scheduling as well as like making sure what I want to do. So. Um, as I said before, I'm a CCS biochemistry major and through CCS, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's the College of Creative Studies. And through that college, I have this advisor and he, along with um, other students, we go through our classes and with the classes that we're taking, how can we cater it to what I wanna do in my future? So that's been very helpful in scheduling everything. Um, yeah, I would recommend just making sure you go to advising with your college too. Sorry, I, I want to just jump in and voice that. Do go to your counselor. I go to my, I literally talk to my counselor like every month. <laughs> so besties and she really helps me a lot. Thanks y'all. Okay, we've got like two, actually one minute left. Um, so I want to squeeze in one last question. And this came up in the pre-submitted questions. It's come up in the live questions, but essentially what advice would you give to other women who are interested in pursuing STEM at UCSB? I would say, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I would say you definitely need to find your group of friends or people that you want to study with because those people, they're going to be the ones that go to classes with you, the ones you'll see maybe not every day, but you'll see them a lot. And because of that, they're going to be really the driving force to make sure that you're on top of your stuff and making sure you're getting things done. So I would say just make sure that you have those group of people always pushing you as well as you pushing them too, and having a mentor to guide you with your career. Uh, I'm gonna just say, assert yourself, do literally whatever you want. If you are a woman in STEM, I feel like you can conquer the world basically. And so don't think that like, I'm only restricted and my identity is a woman in STEM. Like, no, you can be creative. You can do everything you want beyond that. Um, so just make sure that you provide yourself to grow in so many different like um, uh, spaces beyond just STEM um, and just basically rock it. Like if you wanna do something, go for it. Um, even if it doesn't pertain to STEM and just know that you're able and capable of doing everything. And if you ever need help, like UCSB has so many resources. We didn't explain everything now, but I promise you when you come on campus, there's so many resources that it will enable you to move forward in all those spaces that you wanna achieve. Yes, everything that they just said, like 100%, join clubs, like explore yourself, explore your identity, explore who you wanna be in the future, like what your role in the world is gonna be is it's like, just to find yourself in college, like try to find like what you love, what you hate. Um, and just knowing like that it's not really going to be like, yes, it'll affect you and like your, your trajectory, like, and like where you're going to end up, but you can make mistakes and you're still going to be okay. Like that's my biggest mistake. Like, my biggest advice, my biggest mistake. That's my biggest advice. Like make mistakes, say yes to things and like go into things and then figure out that you hate them and then go into something else and figure out that you love this thing or like you only love some parts of it. And like, just do as many things as you can because you're really, that's how you're going to find yourself. Like, just say yes to things, like apply to different things. Even if you think you're never going to get it, like you'll be surprised, like how many opportunities you actually will get if you just try. Um, that's was my, that was my biggest shock when I came to university. Like, oh, I can, I can do this or like, I can get these opportunities. Like, I didn't even know that I was like 
that I had the opportunity to do these things. So just say yes to things, apply to things, um, join different clubs and organizations. Like those are going to help you so much when you're in college and when you're going through these really hard classes. So just say yes. Fantastic. Ladies, thank you so much. This was such great information. I know we didn't get to everyone's question, uh, but I'm hoping you got some really good information and perspective on what it means to study STEM as a woman, particularly at UC Santa Barbara. Um, I want to thank the three of you, really four of you, for taking some time tonight, um, you know, even right before a midterm to really share your experiences and your advice. I am so, so appreciative of that. Thank you to everyone who attended this evening, whether you've been joining all of our open house events or this is your only one. I'm excited that you tuned in. And again, I hope you really got some great information out of it. So with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your night. Bye, everyone. <laughs>